Hey, what is going on guys? It's your boy John aka Spears here and today I'm bringing you guys a brand new blackout gameplay This is going to be a solo breakdown. This was a 12 kill solo win um, I, This was when I was doing the filming for the ICR tip video So you guys might remember some of these clips, but basically this is just me going through I'm gonna be cutting up the gameplay in a useful way It's not gonna be all action There are gonna be times where I'm just sitting there looking at my mini map But I'm gonna be commentating over top of it to kind of tell you guys what I'm thinking, you know, how I'm moving around in the circle, what gunfights I'm picking, what shots I'm pushing, and why, pretty much, you know, why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. I think it could be beneficial. I've been getting a lot of comments from people asking me to make these kinds of videos, so I think, you know, I figured why not. So we're starting off here. I dropped at Rivertown. I loot the same three houses every time, and as soon as I get to the end, I always come over to this house across the street because it's very open, very airy, and you can get on the roof, but you can always come in through the second floor. You never have to go up the stairs, which I think is a really good thing. I did use the grapple there, but you can still go up and just jump right onto the second floor. This first kill here, I got kind of lucky. This was one of these situations, you know, where I had seen him first. But if he would have said seen me first, I would have taken, you know, maybe two or three shots. I would have immediately figured out where I was getting shot from, taken cover, healed, and then pushed back out to the middle room and gotten onto the roof to get a vantage point because a lot of people aren't expecting that. Here, I am switching up my weapons. This is something I do throughout the game a lot. I always end the game with the two guns that I like the most, especially if I'm going to be, if I win the game, I always end the game with the guns that I like. And that is the ICR or the ABR for ARs. And I always end with some sort of, you know, DMR or sniper rifle. I don't touch the auger tactical. I pretty much only use the outlaw, the paladin, the Kashka or the SDM. So here we go. We're going out and we... But I think that's something that a lot of people overlook is having a, you know, a close range weapon and then a far range weapon. The ARs kind of work as a close and far, but I would highly suggest keeping a bolt action or something of that nature on your class because honestly, it's a good thing to take the first shot with. You know, you could get an armor hit. It does a lot of damage to armor. Or, you know, you can get a headshot, which will just instantly down and kill the player. Obviously, this is the early game looting. I know you guys probably missed it there, but I dropped the grip off of my ABR and put it onto the outlaw. And that's because my ABR, I don't need to ADS very quickly with it. Whereas my bolt action sniper, quick scoping, and things of that nature become very beneficial, you know, in the game and can make a world of difference. So here I'm looting and I hear a buggy coming in or not a buggy, a quad coming in. So I line up my shot. I let him move into the site first before I fire. And then, you know, I just let it rip. Obviously when you're sniping people, it's better to try to not trace with them, you know, Figure out your bullet lead times, get that all down, and then just find a spot that the person is running, and then just leave your site there. Let them run into the site rather than trying to track the site with them, because it is going to be so much easier if you let them just run into the site. Um, obviously, here you saw I dropped the ABR for the ICR, and I put a reflex on it, because that is what I like personally. I don't really worry too much about attachments in the early game because usually after one or two kills, you know, you have all the attachments that you need. So you don't need to loot that much in the early game. Obviously, you want to be more vigilant for players. You can let them do the looting for you and then take them out. Throwables in this game are absolutely huge and perks. People often overlook perks. It's really something that I did at the start as well. I wasn't really too keen on them, but now if I ever see, you know, paranoia, dead silence or awareness i pick those perks up without question i'll make room in my bag no matter what it is i'll even drop meds in some situations and obviously everybody knows throwables are op so right now i'm hearing shots and i'm kind of taking notice of the circle i believe last time i checked i was center circle ish you know i wasn't anywhere near an edge and i heard shots across the water so i didn't want to be completely boring and you don't want to stay in one place too long because if you're not pushing around and looking for people I promise you other people are pushing around and you're going to get run up on. So you'd rather be the one kind of being the aggressor. You don't want to be overly aggressive. So here I had seen somebody far away. So I took my shots with my sniper, like I said. I 
I found out that he didn't have armor, so I felt very confident, you know, in my ability to push. I had fresh level 2 armor, I had trauma kits on deck, you know, I have my throwables. If I don't have those things, I kind of, you know, lay low, I kind of hold back. So there, I had paranoia attached, I heard the zombie sound in the background, I knew I was getting ADS on, so I figured I'd push towards this guy because the ADS sound came from my back. I got very lucky that right there, I don't know if you guys caught that, but I saw his character model, you know, through the wall for like a split second, so I knew I just needed to nade right up in that window, and it would be easy, an easy kill to pick up. Grabbed Paranoia again. I try to run Paranoia literally the entire game, if possible. It is the greatest thing. It's just, it's the best. I, it, paranoia is my absolute favorite perk. All right, so right now I am comfortable with my spot in circle. I like having a very open area around me because it allows me to have a lot of visibility in terms of watching my surroundings. I don't mind the fields as long as I'm the one in the buildings. Obviously, I was going to clear out this compound. This guy had the same idea. He thought he would be able to see people running up, but in solos, it's kind of hard to watch all of the angles at once. So maybe this isn't the best spot right now, but in terms of circle position, I'm right where I want to be. I prefer to be on the tiny side of circle, if that makes any sense to you guys. You know, when the circle is, our, the new circles appears and the and the um, the blue zone where it closes in, you want to be on the smallest part of that map. And there's some things that will dictate whether that's actually a good spot. You know, if it's uphill advantage, if there's cover, rocks, everything has kind of a checklist and checks and balances. Now I'm hearing shots over there and I had seen somebody strafe left to right through that doorway. So I took notice of that. I don't want to end up like the guy before me. So I'm constantly checking behind me. I'm never, you know, just being completely unaware. I am using Astro A40s. I have a decent headset, so I'm keeping my ears open as well. I'm listening, and audio cues are kind of messed up in Blackout, but still, Battle Royales as a whole, they're just absolutely, you know, essential. If you don't have a headset, I highly suggest getting one. Even like a cheap $20 headset is going to make a world of difference. You guys will notice that. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, apply my next paranoia. You know, this perk in particular is extremely, extremely helpful in solos. Uh, I Okay, so right there, something that I even missed, but I do it all the time. I was getting my quick equip menu ready. So I had the grapple because I knew I was going to want to hit that. And then I quickly am going to switch to the Semtex, which is what I had left it on, knowing that I was going to want to use it. So right there, boom, switched. And then I switched again to the nine bang. I try to leave all of my loot in a, or my quick equip when you, menu in a way that I'm going to, want to use it i usually start with the nine bang or the sem i mean the cluster grenade and then i leave the quick equip menu on the opposite so if it's a nine bang then i'll have a cluster grenade ready and if it's a cluster grenade i'll have a nine bang ready so here i'm seeing i have a chopper which obviously for solos is op because now I realize I have to move to circle. So I'm going to work for that back tiny side look. I'm even marking on my map. I wasn't even going to make this into a commentary, but this is literally how I play. So I'm looking at that tiny side of the circle because anywhere outside that tiny side is just everybody's going to be pushed into a small area. So you're just setting yourself up to get third partied, to have to engage more enemies, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but at a certain point, you can't engage everybody. You know, you, you want to pick your fights and you want to play the circle smart because in the end game what's the point of dying with 15 kills when you could get a win with 10 that's just the way i play the game you're still going to get a lot of kills and you get the majority of your kills in the end circle in this game i think i get three or four kills in the last circle because you know once you're there once you make it you can start cleaning them up i see somebody up there at the gas station i'm popping some shots here and there um obviously they're kind of whatever if i get lucky i get lucky uh, but it didn't work out. I always check loot bags. It's kind of this is a bad thing You should never always be checking loot bags. I have a really bad problem with that I'm always maxed out on everything and I always still loot. It makes absolutely no sense Now this is something a lot of people don't know about the chopper is that if you fly it lower to the ground You have a less chance of being locked onto and actually blown up people don't take as many shots So here I am high up and obviously I'm getting shot at but I was looking for the person that was at gas station but I had seen him and I knew that I, it was just a bad idea. If I jump down, I'm probably going to die. He's going to hear it coming. He's going to know. But I'm flying my chopper low to the ground. The person can't shoot out at me anymore. I'm not getting locked onto by any rockets. I'm not having any problems. It is kind of sketchy if you're not the best chopper driver. Maybe fly above the trees 
it is you know you could run into something and then die here i go all the way back up and instantly boom we're already getting shot at again that's the one thing a lot of people don't know is flying the chopper low to the ground really helps out a lot i've located the person that is shooting me so i'm gonna go ahead and take an aggressive approach because he is on tiny side of circle and he is uphill so right now he has in my opinion the best circle position he is up inside of the sniper tower which makes it easy for me to get a nade off obviously i didn't kill him i'm getting shot from another angle so i know i have to instantly push if i don't push and i stay low that person from my side is going to kill me i have to you know pounce on this person while he is weak he has a ton of you know trauma kits which obviously if you guys have first aids other things drop them for trauma kits it's 200 health plus a vest or any kind of armor is just op it's honestly it's it helps out so much there's you have to treat every every fight as if it's going to be your last. So if you have one concussion, one trauma, one whatever, use it. It doesn't matter. If you make it through that fight, you can take their loot and get all the loot. You know, you can get all the stuff back that you're going to use. But if you don't, you might lose the fight, like right here. So I was pushing up to get higher ground on this hill. And uh, I thought this was an earlier kill. I'll talk about this then a little bit later. But I was, you don't want to stay lower on the hill. Obviously, I'm grabbing traumas again. But like I said, I just used that trauma, and here I go. I just found two more. I used one trauma to get two back. It's a pretty good return on investment right there, and I stayed alive through the whole ordeal. But, okay, so now I'm still, t you know, tiny side of circle. I'm on top of the hill. This is a good spot. I just have to watch all around me. I'm waiting for circle to hit. There's no reason. I know this area is clear. I cleared it myself. I killed the only person I know is around here, so there's no reason for me to go running off and, you know, trying to find people because I was waiting for circle to close circle should always dictate pretty much all of your movements in a game whether you the circle is against you or for you in this instance it's for me so I have tiny side essentially right here so I'm going to swing left because I do not want to go downhill and I'm betting that players are going to be in these houses and if they're not even better because I'm going to have this uphill advantage. I'm getting my sensor dart out early so I have kind of circle control and I know that's the section I'm going to want to push into because looking at the way the hill is, if I go any more to the circle on the right, I'm going to be further downhill. I want to be, you know, almost at the tippity top of the hill, but I like staying off the side a little bit because I don't want to be coming. I don't want the people coming out of the houses to be right at my back. I would rather be on the side, you know, and have an angle on them when I'm pushing into circle. And also if I do decide to push over there to push somebody then i know i'm not going to be getting flanked on my right side because this sensor dart is going to have me covered so right here i'm pushing left i'm keeping my eyes on the compound it is crucial that you get ready for people to push from blue you want to get to circle a little bit early but obviously not too too early so i try to get there right when the blue starts to push because that's just for me the best time obviously in this instance i killed a guy and i looted him and he happened to be right on the edge of circle so it just worked out but here i'm maintaining the high ground I'm realizing that nobody is actually pushing from the houses, so they must have swung out uh, like out to the left because I had gotten shot on my left. So they must be swinging left, and sure enough, there they are. He must have pushed from the houses. He could be coming from, you know, from Array or other areas. But here again, letting people push into your sights is so helpful. Trying to trace with an enemy, you know, trace your sight on them and hold it on them is not easy on a controller. Like I always say, leave them. And here we go. Somebody tried to backside me. As soon as they heard the shots, they started swinging uphill and on me. But the sensor dart I had preemptively put down let me know that immediately. And I'm not. I didn't get flanked. There again, throwables. Treat every fight like it's your last. I think I only had two semtexes. I mean, two clusters. I used one in that fight. I don't typically condone looting in these end game situations and I really have to stop doing that. That's a really bad habit. But here we go. We cleared our left. Now we knew this guy swung up right, but right is clear. We know from our sensor dart and there's the tiny side of circle. So we're going to keep pushing this way very slowly, very cautiously, realizing that there's two little houses down there, you know, taking in everything all at once. Our left seems clear and we're not worried about people pushing from our left because it is such an open area. We're more worried about these houses right now because if someone was to shoot us, we just hop over the fence, go down the hill, and now they lost their line of sight and then you can swing up and right or you can keep pushing down. But here I've cleared my right now and now I'm going to swing back left. There's no reason to, just because it's a circle, you don't have to swing the entire circle. Here's this guy. He's also was pushing right. He had the same idea as me. And we're both going to, you know, nine bang. And then here I get concussioned, which look at this. Look at how overpowered the concussion is. 
But right now, he is 9 banged. I'm concussed. I'm going to hit him with the Semtex, and then I'm going to shoot him. You know, kind of creates a fluster. I did almost kill myself with that Semtex. But now, again, you see how I'm going back uphill, and uphill happens to be with the tiny side of circle. I always end game. Tiny side of circle is the place to be because, you know, chances are people are going to be on that outside edge of the circle. Everybody's playing outside edge. So when it pushes in, the bigger the area, the chances that more players are going to be there, and you're just going to end up with all those players in the end game. Right now, I have eight kills or nine kills which might seem unimpressive but like i said most kills if you make it to the end circle you'll be able to pick them up here obviously with the tiny side of circle and me coming from uphill i just have the absolute advantage on everybody i put myself in the perfect circle position all game it's really working out i don't have any armor but i do have a trauma kit i sent out that nine bang as a probe and i didn't get any hit markers on it so i'm assuming they're all more to my right because i cleared that person on my left Sure enough, I see one far left. That's what makes me push back. I also see this guy that sees me. The guy that was laying in the grass exposed himself when he fired at the enemy in front of me. I immediately heal instead of killing him because if the guy downhill decides to push me while I'm healing, I'd rather have that extra person there to take him out. Obviously, take the only cover in circle that I have, and then I just finish off the last guy. After. That's pretty much how I play blackout and play circle in these games hope this helped you guys you know i i could do more of these i could do more in-depth in-depth videos about circle movement because i know a lot of people have trouble with that but pretty much you want to prioritize height advantage and tiny side of circle and if you stick to those two things you will see an op an absolute increase in wins and overall frags kills whatever you guys want to call them it helps out a lot if you guys haven't already dropped a like on this video i'd very much appreciate that uh yeah sub to the channel if you guys are new around here and i'll catch you on the next one peace